Hey everyone, welcome back to Horse 2 Cinema, and today I'm going to be reviewing Crimes of the Future, which was directed by David Cronenberg. This is Cronenberg's step back into the body horror genre, which uh, is a genre that he uh, is often credited with creating, even though that's not quite true, but he did uh, for sure uh, popularize it back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And the last film he made that was solidly in the body horror genre was probably Existence back in 1999. And, uh, but now he's finally going fully back into it. His body horror work in particular has influenced a lot of young filmmakers. Um, obviously he has a son, Brandon Cronenberg, who has made movies like uh, Possessor and Antiviral. Also filmmakers like Julia DeCorno, whose film Titan last year won the Palme d'Or at Cannes. For myself personally, I think in the last year or so, I've started to gravitate towards this genre, body horror, quite a bit. I think I like it just because of how vulnerable it is. Oftentimes the, you know, gross, disgusting body horror uh, stuff that's in the film is usually meant to symbolize somebody's internal conflict or internal pain that they want to externalize, which I can definitely relate to. You know, I've, I've dealt with things in my life, uh, mental health problems and uh, as well as um, issues related to hypochondria. Uh, which which is a kind of body horror in itself. And a lot of that really just has to do with uh, lack of control, which is definitely a theme of a lot of Cronenberg's work. So in that way, Cronenberg has become a very important filmmaker to me, and uh, Videodrome is probably my favorite of his, but um, I still need to explore the rest of his work. I've only seen like maybe five or six films that he's done. So naturally, when I heard about Crimes of the Future, I was pretty psyched uh, to hear it was coming out. The trailer looked pretty crazy, which is standard fare for Cronenberg, but when I actually finally saw the film, I was really taken with how like melancholic and self-reflective it, it was, uh, which I'll get into. But uh, yeah, right off the bat, I really liked this movie. So the plot is that in the near future, humanity has begun to adapt to a synthetic environment in which people can hardly feel pain. Saul Tenzer, played by Viggo Mortensen, and his partner, played by Leah Sadu, are performance artists who create and surgically extract new organs in public operating theaters. Meanwhile, a mysterious group wants to use Saul's notoriety to shed light on what could be the next phase of human evolution. Right off the bat, I think this is some of the best world building that's been done in any film this year. Cronenberg is of course a big sci-fi fan, as can be seen in a lot of his work, and of course this film I think would fit into the sci-fi genre. He's also, I think, written some sci-fi work himself, um, and also I believe he was he wrote a bunch of drafts for Total Recall, and I think he was uh, tapped to direct it as well, but they ended up going in a more kind of campy action direction with it. But regardless, he really has uh, a major grasp on uh, sci-fi, especially kind of darker existential sci-fi. And a big part of sci-fi, of course, is world building, and I think they really do a great job of it here. One important aspect of world building is that I'm given enough information to understand the world around these characters pretty well, but at the same time, I don't necessarily want every question answered. It's when I lead the film, I, I, I still want to have questions about the world that uh, the film shouldn't directly answer for me. And in terms of understanding the world around these characters, I think that, um, you know, the production design in particular is just top notch. I think they did a really, really good job here. They have all these different like machines that they use in the film uh, for uh, different kinds of surgeries and autopsies, uh, as well as just like feeding uh, humans in this world who can't do it for themselves. Really makes everything feel like cinematic, like it exists in another universe, but also quite grounded in reality. Everything's very practical. So yeah, I should understand the you know the world around these characters, but again, I should still have questions uh, about the world itself that maybe the film doesn't answer. And I think that is the case here. So for example, to what extent did climate change uh, play a part in creating this synthetic environment? Is our blending of sex and pain that we you know often see uh, in this day and age, is that going to affect our evolution one day? And in the future where surgery and these body alterations are so common, is it, you know, is it something that the average person can afford or is this only a thing that the wealthy are experiencing. These are all questions that the film doesn't answer, but I don't think it's necessarily supposed to. It just gets your mind thinking about it as good world building should. But another part of world building that's so essential is that you understand what makes the characters tick. And I think Cronenberg did a really good job with casting in this movie because the performances by pretty much everybody are just great. Leah Sadu, uh, who's one of the leads, is of course fantastic as usual, but I, the two that really stood out to me were uh, Viggo Mortensen and Kristen Stewart. Viggo Mortensen has always been an actor that I love. Um, actually, one of my favorite performances of his is in a movie that I don't really like, uh, Captain Fantastic. But even though I don't like that movie, I've watched it multiple times just because he really is so great in it. He has a way of looking at people that kind of implies self-importance in a lot of ways, which could be annoying, but I actually think it really works in a film like this where he's essentially a celebrity. Crimes of the Future I'm talking about, not Captain Fantastic. And as far as the body horror goes, I know this is his first time working with uh, David Cronenberg where it's uh, where it's a full-on body horror movie. I think his other ones were uh, History of Violence and Eastern Promises, which I think are just kind of not 
explicitly body horror movies. But I think he really sells it here. I mean, whenever he's eating in his like little futuristic chair, uh, there's all these little movements of his, especially his neck and his uh, shoulders that really uh, make you feel uh, the body horror. You hear every little crack in his body and you kind of uh, see how his neck is contorting a little bit to this machine's will. You always get the sense that he's really weak uh, because of his evolutionary state and kind of what he's doing to his body as well. But for me, my favorite performance in this movie was definitely Kristen Stewart. And I was actually a little bit disappointed as to how little she was in the movie. I was kind of expecting her to be a, a little bit more at the center. She plays a character that's very fascinated with Saul, um, and she's also very sexually crazed, basically. Kristen Stewart, especially from the Twilight movies, is kind of famous for um, just portraying angst really well. But, uh, and I think oftentimes that's used as like a criticism of her, but I actually think that oftentimes she can use that as a real strength. And I think that's, uh, this is certainly an example of that. Mm. You know what it is. Surgery is the new sex. She uses that angst uh, that she's famous for to show this really fucked up sense of sexual frustration that must come from her lack of ability to feel pain, really, like a lot of these characters must be feeling. And another aspect of this film that I wanted to touch on outside of the world building and the performances is just how self-reflective and like melancholic I think this film is. Cronenberg said in a recent interview that with this film, he's very vulnerable and he's kind of offering up his insides in the same way that uh, Saul is offering up his insides whenever he does one of his surgery performances. I think that sort of says that he's starting to reflect on the impact of his career. Characters in the film talk about this quite a bit, actually. So at one point, there's a scene where somebody asks Saul how something so grotesque like the surgery can be considered art, uh, and how the you know, somebody's insides can be, considered, can be considered art. And I think that's something Cronenberg has tried to prove and has proved over and over again with his career is that uh, very grotesque things can have much more meaning beyond just the simple grotesqueness of the whole thing. Videodrome, for example, being a good example of how, you know, it's, it's yes, of course, there's this gory violence and body horror and everything, but it all is a metaphor for how uh, our, with, for our relationship with entertainment, especially violent entertainment. He's known, of course, for, yes, very visceral body horror, but the body horror itself is always representative of something else, whether it's uh, a human relationship, uh, some kind of character interaction, our relationship with the world around us, or just our inner demons. Crimes of the Future is more about the relationship that we have with the world around us, which I think Saul, the main character, is trying to figure out. Characters start to bring up to him that what he's doing to his body might be uh, not exactly uh, natural and might be interfering, interfering with a, you know a, his natural process of evolution. Uh, which he, you start to wonder, does he think that himself? Which I think might be Cronenberg kind of reflecting on uh, his art that he's created in the past and the extent to which it might have been self-destructive on his life. Which especially as, you know, at the older age that Cronenberg is, is a really kind of, um, you know, thought-provoking idea. While I really like this movie, I do think it fell a little bit short of uh, some of Cronenberg's best work. It's not quite the level of Videodrome or The Fly or Dead Ringers or anything like that. While I think a lot of the ideas that it ex expresses about human evolution are really interesting, I'm not sure that they coalesce into one you know, kind of straightforward message. It's touching on a lot, and not all of it feels like it fully comes together, especially this subplot relating to a group of people that want to use Saul to expose their point of view about uh, human evolution. Not sure that plot device really fully worked in terms of um, tying it into the overall effect of the movie. Also, the conflict in the film isn't always especially clear until towards the end of the movie, where there starts to be real uh, conflict between factions that have different differing views about uh, evolution. But for a lot of the earlier sections of the movie, I just I found myself thinking, okay, a lot of the ideas that, it ex that it's expressing here are very interesting, and I'm sure I'll be thinking about them for a while. Uh, they're well expressed, but where is the actual conflict? And I think that it's not really clear where that's coming from until towards the end of the movie. I can understand somebody seeing this movie, uh, and especially to, uh, you know through the beginning of it, or maybe even after they see the film, just kind of thinking that it's a lot of world building, and there isn't much conflict going on. Even though I do think they kind of get better at that aspect of it, you know, kind of towards the end of the movie. So overall, uh, Crimes of the Future gave me, you know, that fleshy, uh, visceral body horror that I've come to love Cronenberg's uh, work for. It was also really melancholic and self-reflective, even though it doesn't exactly uh, coalesce together as well as some of Cronenberg's best movies. But I really enjoyed it. I really did. I'm gonna give it four stars just because I think, you know, it's a $35 million movie made by one of the masters of cinema. 
uh, that you really just don't see a lot of today. And I'm pretty sure this is bombing at the box office. I'm not surprised. So if you're a horror fan, especially if you're a fan of Cronenberg, if you're just a fan of movies, I would really just suggest checking this out because it's a rarity. Anyway, that's my review for Crimes of the Future. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, you can like it down below and subscribe to the channel. I've got more content coming out soon, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.